Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So please find yourself in a comfortable seated position. Up on a blanket would be ideal. So go ahead and sit yourself up, cross your legs in front of you. Bring your hands to your knees and find that your skull is stacked on top of your heart, on top of your pelvis. Just close your eyes here. Today we're going to be considering how we move through emotions, how emotions affect us, how we experience them in the body. And we'll be using an acronym that I've been working with this week called PONAM. So close your eyes here. And the first part of that acronym is presence. So just land in this moment here. Let go of everything that's come before or anticipation for what's coming next. And find yourself fully rooted here in this moment. Start to breathe in and out through your nose and notice how the breath can anchor us in the now. Noticing as it comes and goes in and out of the nose. Let your belly be super soft so as you inhale, it expands. As you exhale, it draws back to center. A few more times like that. Follow your breath all the way, breathe in. All the way out through the nose. And the next part of the acronym is orientation. So orient yourself, even with your eyes closed. Where are you in the room? Can you feel your body in space? And can you ground your body? So orient yourself to feeling your sit bones on the ground or on the blanket. Can you feel yourself here as being rooted? Maybe orienting yourself in relationship to other people. Maybe the people that are doing this class. Maybe the people in your life. Knowing that we can handle emotions more effectively when we feel the presence of others with us. So ground yourself in this moment. Feel that connection to others. And then move to the end, noticing. Notice sensations in the body as they arise moment to moment. Let our sensations give us clues into how we're doing. Where's the energy rising or falling or swirling? Maybe labeling how you're doing. Maybe you're tired or content, overwhelmed or excited. And then the A is accepting. So accept it all as it is. No need to change it. Welcoming all the emotions as they are. The M stands for movement. So as we identify our emotions in our body, let us move them through us. So blink your eyes open. Bring your hands to your knees, and then just start to draw circles with your torso. So in any direction that you'd like to start with. And this is just to wake the body up. Super, super gently. Let your breath be steady as you do this. You can go as slow or as quickly as you like. Maybe the movements become more exaggerating, finding a back bend as you come forward and rounding as you come back. And then go ahead and bring your fingers behind you. Bend your elbows, bring them in towards one another and then lift your heart up to the sky. Stay long through all four sides of the neck. 
And find your breath here in this proud stance. Use your shoulder blades to lift your heart up to the sky. Maybe bring a smile to the corners of your mouth. A few more breaths like this. Drop your pelvis, let it be heavy. And then bring your hands back to your knees and start to circle in the opposite direction. So keep doing that, circling it out, maybe refining the movement. Keep going like that. Maybe exaggerating the movement, finding the back bend as you come forward and rounding the back as you come back. Good, and then again, come through center, hands behind you, fingertips facing out, bend your elbows, draw your shoulder blades in towards one another and lift your heart once again, look up. And then find your breath here, find length in all four sides of the neck, soften your jaw. Nice and easy and simple. Come back through center, bring your hands to prayer. Maybe setting an intention here for your practice. Perhaps your intention is to simply breathe or practice that panam present orientation. Noticing, accepting, moving. Slowly start to come out of this pose and make your way onto your back. Make your way onto your back with your knees pointing up to the sky, soles of the feet down to the earth. Bring your feet in close-ish towards your buttocks, so comfortable enough, not that they're squeezing in. And then reach your arms out behind you, bring your thumb pads to touch, and then flare your fingers out. So your fingertips will be back behind you, spread them and bring your fingernails down onto the earth. And then draw your fingernails away from you, so you'll find your arms start to strengthen, lengthen rather. And then take a few breaths here into both sides of the body, lengthening through both sides. Push your thumb pads in towards one another to straighten the arms even more. And then bring your right leg to tabletop so your shin is parallel to the earth. Inhale here, flex your foot. And as you exhale, figure for your right ankle on top of the left thigh. Notice the tendency of the pelvis to swing over to the left. Instead, I'd like you to gently swing your pelvis slightly over to the right and find that that lengthens out the left side body. And then push that right knee away from you so the movement is coming external rotation from the thigh bone. And then push your fingertips farther away from you. Find length in both sides of the body. Keep this shape, but drop your right foot to the ground. So this figure four shape is now dropped. Take an inhale, get long in both sides of the body. And then bring your torso slightly over to the left. So we'll call this banana, bananasana, like a banana. Push your thumb pads even more into one another and breathe into the right lung and the right heart, right side of your uh, ribs. Just find your breath here. Push your thumb pads, straighten your arms. One more inhale. Come back through center. Bring that figure four shape once again up to the sky. Push your thumb pads, bring your fingers away from you once again and listen closely. Bring that left knee in towards you so your left foot lifts off of the earth. So it's like you're pulling your knee in towards your chest, but your hands aren't there to help you. And again, find length in the left side body by moving that left hip light slightly down and then push that right knee away from you. And then pull the knee again in towards your chest and take a few breaths here. Stay straight in the arms. Keep your neck nice and long on all four sides. Last inhale. Plant the sole of the left foot down onto the earth. Reach the right leg up to the sky and then interlace your hand behind that right thigh. And then straighten your right leg any amount here as your right hip pushes away from your right ear. You can keep the left leg bent or you can reach it long out in front of you. And then can you imagine pushing your thigh, front thigh into your hamstring, your quad. 
flex your right foot and take a few breaths here. Find strength in both legs. Left leg is flexed and strong. Right leg is flexed and strong. Good. And then slowly release both soles of the feet down to the earth once again, and we'll switch sides. Bring your arms up overhead. Bring the opposite thumbs on, on top this time. The thumb pads to touch. Flare your fingers, and then draw your fingernails on the wood behind you out far away so your arms are nice and straight. And then inhale your left leg up to tabletop. Shin is parallel to the ground. Exhale, you cross that left ankle on top of the right thigh. Notice the tendency of the pelvis to sway over to the right. Can you sway it slightly over to the left, finding length in both sides of the body? Breathe in. And then push that left knee away from you as you breathe out. Good. Drop that left foot onto the floor to the right, so the shape falls over to the right. And then again, you slowly start to bring your upper body over to the right slightly, and we're breathing into the banana like shape. Push your thumb pads in towards one another and draw your fingers away from you. Straighten your arms any amount. You can breathe. Left lung, left side body. Bring a smile to your face if that feels okay. Good. Come back through center once again. Thumbs pad push. Thumb pads push. Straighten your arms. Breathe in. And then as you exhale, keep that shape, but lift your right foot up off of the ground and bring the right knee in towards your chest. So you're finding this stretch in your left hip, find length in all sides of the body, right and left. Breathe in here. Breathe out here. Good. Plant the right foot down onto the earth and then bring your left leg up towards the sky. Interlace your hand behind the thigh. And then slowly start to draw that left hip away from your left ear. You get to choose if your right knee stays bent or your right leg goes long out in front of you. Either way, keep that left leg super nice and straight. Micro bend if you need to. You just find that the back of the leg is awakening here. Soften your face as you do this. Maybe you spread your toes. And find your rest. Good. Slowly re release the sole of that left foot down onto the earth. Grab both hands behind your thighs here. And just rock up and down the length of your spine. So rock up, maybe catching yourself at the top here in Navasana. And you rock back. Maybe you catch yourself. Just enjoying the massage for the back. And then slowly roll over onto hands and knees here. So hands underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips. Straighten your arms, flare your fingers. Zip your belly up towards your spine. Take an inhale here. And as you exhale, round your spine, so drop your head, find this cow, cat shape. Tip your tailbone up to the sky, drop your belly, find cow, pull with your hands. Exhale, find cat shape. A few more times like that. Breathe in, drop your belly, look up. Exhale, round. Find a neutral spine, tuck your toes underneath you. Lift your hips up and back to downward facing dog. The first downward dog perhaps of the day. Find your orientation again. Where are you rooted? Here you root through your hands especially through your thumb and index fingers, the inner lines of the hands, and then use that rooting to push the floor away. Close the mouth of your ribs, and then you can straighten one leg, and then the next. Just a gentle exploration of the backs of the thighs. Good. Slowly start to reach your right leg up towards the sky. And then look forward. Maybe you come up onto left fingertips. Again, find that rooting in your right hand and in your right shoulder socket. Feel all the muscles stabilizing that right shoulder. Maybe you lift those, right, those left fingertips up off the ground just a few inches. Be present to this moment. 
Orient yourself to the grounding of your right hand and your shoulder. Notice if this is successful or maybe not so much. That's okay, accept it all as it is. Bring your left hand down to the ground, inhale. Exhale, bring your right foot between your hands. Drop your back knee down to the earth. If you wanna bring your blanket, you can bring it under the left knee. Bring your hands to that water bottle or block and then let your hips sink down. Draw your right hip back, left hip forward. Bring your fingertips nice and tall and then find the cow in your spine. So really expand through the heart space here and find your breath. Just landing in this pose here, this asana. And then slowly start to lift your hips up and back, coming to Ardha Hanumanasana. Two more times like that. Inhale, come forward, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, lift your hips up and back, Ardha Hanuman. Last time, inhale, come forward, find broadness through the chest. Exhale, hips come up and back. Listen close. Stay back in Ardha Hanuman. Your right fingertips come out to the right. And then your left hand comes to the outside of that left foot. And then from here, keep your right foot super flexed. You can let your right toes and your right knee simply roll out to the right, your hips will sway to the left. And then here's your chance to explore. You can wiggle your hips around, maybe you bend into your right knee, maybe you straighten, but can you find more connection between that left hand and the outer right pinky foot? And just find your breath here and explore. Slowly start to bend into that right knee. Your right, your left fingertips are still underneath your foot. And if that feels okay, you tuck your back toes under and inhale, straighten both legs. You come to pyramid pose. This is kind of like a fun pyramid. And then you'll wiggle your hips side to side again, just exploring here. What happens when you bend that right knee slightly? What happens when you straighten the leg? What happens when you wiggle your hips to the left or to the right? Just a gentle exploration. And then you bend into that right knee, remove your hands from underneath your foot, and then slowly sway to crawl your fingertips over to the left. You'll find yourself in a wide leg fold. So toes point forward or slightly pigeoned inwards, hands underneath your face. Inhale, get tall, breathe in. Exhale, fold, let all the air out. At the bottom of the exhale, you hold. On empty, you bring your hands forward. So your upper body is in down dog. Your lower body is in a forward fold. Keep holding the breath out. When you have to inhale, you bring your hands underneath your face, get tall, inhale. And then slowly spider crawl your fingers to the top of the mat. Plant your palms, step back into plank. You get to choose today whether your plank is done on your knees or off your knees. Take an inhale in your variation. And exhale, lower all the way down to the mat, nice and slow. Today for our back bend, we'll find Shalabhasana. So spread your toes here, lift your legs, arms come behind you pointing in towards one another, and then inhale up. Use your back muscles to lengthen through the chest here. So you're finding total broadness through the collarbone. Smile perhaps as you do this, take an inhale. Exhale, bring your hands down by your ribs, tuck your toes, belly to spine as you push up through the top of the push-up. Exhale, up and back, downward facing dog. Find your breath and downward dog. Just noticing what's coming up and accepting whatever that is. Inhale, you sweep your left leg up to the sky. Look forward, maybe you come onto right fingertip. You can stay here, this is plenty of work, or you start to hover that right hand up off the mat any amount. And you can hover it for a moment, put it back down. Just play with this here. Find your left shoulder nice and rooted. All the stability with the muscles around your shoulder are helping you out here. Take a last inhale. 
Plant your right palm onto the mat if it wasn't there already. Step your left foot between your hands. Drop your right knee down to the mat. Grab your prop. Maybe you want a blanket underneath your knee if your knee is sensitive, so be kind to yourself. Come up nice and high. Bring your left hip back, right hip forward. Find broadness through the chest. You can simply find your breath here, breathing into the right line of the body, the psoas system that comes from the low back, through the buttocks, across the front of the hip. Just land right here. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, hips move up and back to Ardha Hasana. Two more times. Inhale, come forward, breathe in. Exhale, hips come up and back. Last time, breathe in, come forward. Exhale, find Ardha Hanuman and stay. Flex your left foot. Bring your left fingertips out to the left onto the wood. Right hand comes to the outside edge of that left foot. And then let that left leg roll out so the toes roll out. They point in the exact same direction as the knee. And then this is yogi exploration. So you'll start to wiggle your hips side to side. Maybe you start to bend your front knee. Find more action between the foot and the hand here, finding that leverage to stretch into the right side body. And then steady your breath here. And then if it's okay to step on that right, those right fingers, you bend into your front knee. So you face forward once again, bend into front knee. Tuck your back toes under, lift hips up and back into pyramid pose, stepping on your right fingers. And then again, your left hand is out to the left and let your hips fall to the right. And you're just exploring here in pyramid, maybe bending that front knee, maybe straightening it. Every body is different and everybody is different every day. That's such a good line, <laughs> but it's true. So how are you doing today? Not yesterday or how do you wish you were doing? How are you doing? Just investigate. Come back through center, remove your hand from underneath your foot and then you'll spray your crawl yourself over to the right. So you'll be in this wide-legged forward fold on the right. Bring your hands underneath your face. Inhale, find a flat back. And then exhale all the air out, even more than you want to. And hold at the bottom of the exhale on empty. You bring your hands out into this downward dog shape. And hold there. This breath is called kumbhaka. When you need to inhale, find flat back, hands underneath shoulders. And then slowly start to spider crawl your fingers over to the left. Plant your palms, step back to plank. And again, you have each choice whether your knees are down or lifted. Zip your belly, pull your ears back, breathe in. Slowly lower yourself down to the mat, breathe out. Again, we find Shalabhasana, spread your toes, hands come behind you, palms face in towards one another. Inhale, find Shalabhasana, stay here. Really reach through your fingers, wrists, elbows. Use your shoulders, uh, back muscles to pull your heart through. One last inhale like this. Stay lifted in your chest as you tuck your toes under, hands beside your ribs. Tuck your, uh, bring your belly into your spine and then push up through a high push up. And then exhale up and back down with ankle level. From downward dog, bring your knees down to the earth and simply sit backward to your heels, hands to your thighs, and take a moment to check in here. Can you find presence? Ditch whatever came before, whatever you're anticipating next. Orient yourself. So where are you touching the floor? Can you surrender more weight there? Maybe consider that everyone's hearts are beating a little bit faster. Everyone's skin might be finding a little bit more heat. We are in this together. Notice what's going on for you. 
and accept that just as it is, as we find movement. Come forward into tabletop, breathe in. Tuck toes up and back, downward dog, breathe out. From downward dog, sweep your right leg up to the sky. Look forward, come onto left fingertips, yogi's choice. You can stay on left fingertips. You can hover your left fingertips as we did before. Or if you want a challenge, you can draw your left hand alongside your body. This requires a thousand percent presence. You cannot be anywhere else but here to do this successfully. Last few breaths wherever you are. Slowly bring your left hand back to downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. You step your right foot to the center line of the mat between your hands. Rotate your back heel to the midline. And then windmill your arms up as you find warrior two. So find your warrior two. Imagine that energy is moving from the inner line of your pelvis, down your thigh, around your knee, and back towards your buttocks. So there's the external rotation of your thigh. Inhale as you are. Exhale just like that. Inhale, bring your right arm up and back. Exhale, bring your right forearm to your right thigh and lift up left arm alongside the ear find partial konasana let that right shoulder relax down find one long line from the outer left leg to the left fingertips maybe you bring your left hand to the back of your head push hand into head head into hand make sure your forehead is higher than your chin so you're not dropping down for this one today breathe in here look at the floor plant your palms step back to plank you get to decide. You either move through a flow, lowering halfway or all the way. Find your shalabhasana or your upward dog. Plant your palms and find your way up and back, downward facing dog. From downward dog, lift your left leg up to the sky, look forward. Come up onto right fingertips this time. You are more than welcome to stay here. This is hard or you float your right fingers, or you draw your right arm alongside your body. Feel the stability in your left shoulder. Be totally present here. Let the breath anchor you. Let that hand and shoulder orient you. You are grounded. Notice how this is going and allow how it is going. Bring your right hand back to downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Exhale, step your left foot forward into the midline of the back. Spin your back heel down and then wing on your arms. Breathe in into warrior two. Breathe out, settle into your warrior. Can you find your back leg super strong? Front leg is nice and bent. The knee rolls out. And simply steady your energy here. Reverse your warrior, left arm comes up to the sky, breathe in. Breathe out as your left forearm comes to the left thigh and your right arm draws alongside your body for partial konasana. You can bring your right hand to the back of your head, push hand into head, head into hand, and open your chest to the right. Stay light on that left forearm so you're not dumping the weight down. Lengthen both sides of the body, breathe in. Plant your palms and step back, breathe out. Take an inhale as you are. And then you decide if you make your way through a flow or whether you move up and back to downward facing dog. Only you can decide that. Good. From down facing dog, look forward. Slowly start to walk your feet towards your hands, coming to Uttanasana, forward fold at the top of the mat. From forward fold, you can drop your brain, feel a stretch in the cervical spine. Maybe bending one knee, straightening the, straightening the opposite leg. 
And then either hinge from your hips and make your way up, or you roll up, letting your head be heavy. You get to choose. And then find Tadasana. So with your feet hip width distance or your toes touch at um, heels, uh, fists apart, roughly. Your shoulders melt down. Find the tailbone hugging into the body so that the hips open up. Find your crown reaching up to the sky without causing any stress on your neck. Let your shoulders melt down. Just be here. This looks like standing, but it is a yoga pose if you bring the intention and awareness to it. And just like we've been doing, land here without the need to move through this, just be here. Orient yourself, really feel your feet grounding, big toes, baby toes, lifting through the arches, feeling the heels root. Notice what's happening in your body, sensations, feeling, and then allow it, welcome it in. And then we'll find movement. Inhale your arms up to the sky, keep the strength in the leg, belly hugs to spine. Exhale, fold, hinging from your hips. Hands to shin, spine flat back, get long from crown to tail. Exhale, fold. Reach your arms forward and up, tap your hips to center as you come to Urdhva Hastasana. Hands to heart center. Two more times like that, half sun salutation. Inhale, reach your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold forward, navel to spine. Inhale, flat back, bend your knees. Exhale, drop your brain, straighten your legs any amount. Reach your arms up to the sky, find Urdhva Hastasana, pack your hips to center, and then hands to heart center, let it go. Last time, reach your arms up, Urdhva, fold forward, Uttanasana. Reach crown long as you breathe in, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Reach your arms up, breathe in. Hands to heart center, Samasthiti. We'll move right away, Surya Namaskara A. Reach your arms up, breathe in. Exhale, fold, let it go. Inhale, flat back, get long. Plant your palms, step back to plank and flow through, or if you're tired, you make your way back down or dog and we'll meet there. In downward dog, we take five breaths together. So you get to decide down dog or child's pose. Push the floor away, find length in the spine, find length in both sides of the body. Last two breaths. Good. Look forward, make yourself, make your way to the top of the mat mindfully, walk, step or hop. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Reach your arms to the sky, stabilize through your hips, use your um, core here. Exhale, hands to heart center. We'll move through tree pose now. Bring your hands to your hips. Make sure your hip bones are facing forward. And then kickstand your, your right leg. So your right ankle, uh, your right um, heel is resting on your ankle. This is perfectly fine. Or you bring your right uh, foot to your uh, inner leg, or you can reach your arm, reach it up. And then make sure that your pelvis isn't falling out to the right. So your hips are facing forward. The movement is coming from the hip socket, and then reach your arms out to the side. And then slowly start to reach your arms up and overhead, bringing your hands to touch, maybe. 
And then maybe you look up and push your hands into one another. If this is too much on the shoulders, you can keep your shoulders nice and broad. That's quite all right. And as you do this, I want you to imagine that you're lifting your rib cage off of your hips. And in particular, I'd like you to please lift the back ribs up. Maybe you close your eyes. And in order to do that, you must be right here, right now. Notice what happens if you fall. Come right back to it. Last few breaths in your variation. Slowly bring your knee back to center, stand both feet on the floor, circle your arms down and find any wiggles, shakes, wiggly jigglies. And then kickstand your left foot so your left heel rests on the ankle, hips point forward. This is quite all right if you're having a hard time with balance. Or you bring that left sole of the foot to the inner right leg or the upper thigh, avoid the knee though. And then take a moment here and just let your arms come out to the side. Take up some space. Find that presence just in what we're doing right now. No need to fly through this. Find your orientation, your grounding in the foot. Find the ankle nice and strong. Lift your arms up overhead. Maybe your palms come to touch. If that's too much for your shoulders, again, stay nice and wide here. Maybe your gaze looks up as you lift your ribs off of your hips, especially the back ribs. And then find your breath here. Notice the wobbles. Notice how this is going. Can you accept whatever is without having to change it? Last three rounds of deep, full breaths. Lift up even higher. Okay, slowly circle your arms down. Stop both feet on the ground and then bring one hand to your belly, one hand to your chest. Close your eyes. Just check in here. Finding presence is an exercise that you'll do again and again with each moment. So land right here. We'll make our way through a flow sequence. You can do as much or as little as feels right for you today. Find yourself at the top of the mat in Tadasana, mountain pose. Take an inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Exhale, hinge from your hips as you fold. Inhale, find flat back. Exhale, plant your palms in either back to downward dog or you flow through chaturanga or all the way down, maybe finding shalabhasana or upward dog. And then maybe back in downward facing dog. We'll play in downward dog. Once again, lift your right leg up to the sky, look forward, come up onto left fingertips, Find stability in the right shoulder. Maybe you float that, uh, left, that left arm up. Maybe you play a little bit more. You bring the right leg out to the right any amount as the left arm comes out to the left any amount. Just for a few breaths. Plant the left palm if it was lifted. Breathe in here. Breathe out. Step your right foot to the middle line of the mat. Breathe in. Windmill your arms up to warrior two. Breathe out, settle in warrior two. Breathe in, reverse your warrior, right arm comes up to the sky. Breathe out, find partial konasana, right forearm to left, to right thigh, left arm up and overhead. Inhale as you are. Exhale, look down at the floor, plant your palms, you decide if you make your way through a flow. I shall not. Meet me back in downward dog. Yogi's choice.
from downward dog. You bring your left leg up to the sky. Maybe you look forward, coming onto right fingertips, floating that right arm up any amount. And then bringing that right arm to the right, left leg out to the left. Just a few nice steady breaths like this. Plant your right palm onto the earth, breathe in. Step your left foot between your hands, breathe out. Back heel to the midline, windmill your arms, warrior two, breathe in. Exhale, settle into your warrior two. Left arm comes up and back, breathe in. Exhale, partial konasana as your left forearm comes to the left thigh, right arm comes up overhead. Breathe in as you are. Breathe out, plant your palms, and you decide once again whether you move through a flow or you meet me back and down on the facing dog. Good. From downward dog, look forward. Bring your right knee to your right wrist. Your right toes will point back on the diagonal. And then go ahead and find your pigeon pose here. So you can find a traditional pigeon with your left leg long out behind you. Your right knee is out in front with your leg on the diagonal, toes pointing back. So you get to choose whether you find traditional pigeon or a more gentle version would be you put your right hip down onto the floor. You find your legs in a windmill, so your right shin is parallel to the front, left shin parallel to the long edge, and then you square your chest to the front, breathe in, and then either variation, you let your chest fall down, breathe out. Whatever it's coming up for you right now, just letting it flow through. Right now, you have no other job but to be. So just be with that. Practice in presence. Orienting to the parts of your body that are touching the earth. Can you sink down even more? Noticing sensations. And letting it all come in. Listen closely. Slowly start to roll yourself up. So you're coming with your hands onto the earth. Tuck your back toes under. Flex your right foot. And then what you'll do is you'll slowly start to straighten both legs. So you keep your right foot exactly where it is, but keep it flexed. You're in a cross-legged pyramid pose. We're looking for a stretch on the outer line of your right hip and your right leg. Push the floor away on fingertips, perhaps sending your hips farther back. Just take a few breaths here. Maybe seeing what happens if you let your hips sway over to the left slightly. And if this is too much, you can keep a bend in your right knee, but please keep your right ankle super mega flex. Plant your palms, bend into your front knee. Step back into plank, and then up and back, downward facing dog. And Notice if there's any difference between sides. Noticing perhaps that there's more space in the right hip. Good. And then look forward, bring your left knee to the left wrist. Bring your left toes back on the diagonal. And you get to decide whether you'd like a traditional pigeon with your right leg back long behind you, or if you'd like this more gentle modified version, left hip down on the earth, legs in a windmill shape. One is not better than the other. Get tall in your spine first. And wherever you are, you gently let that fall forward.
Steady your breath here. Just a few more rounds like that. Slowly start to tuck your back toes underneath you and walk your hands in closer towards your body. Keep your left foot where it is, but flex it at the ankle super strong and then lift your hips up and back into this cross-legged pyramid pose. Your hands will walk back towards your body. You can use your hands, fingertips push into the ground. Maybe see what happens if you sway your hips out to the right any amount. You can bend into your left knee if it's too much to have the legs straight. But keep that left foot super, super flexed here so we don't sickle into the knee. And simply find your breath here, breathing into the left side of the, uh, breathing into the outer left leg. Good. Bend into that front knee, plant your palms, and then as simply as you can, step back into plank and up and back, downward facing dog. From downward dog, I noticed that we didn't do the opposite side of the uh, playing around with our leg lifted, perhaps. So what we will do, actually, I don't remember. Okay, <laughs> bring your legs out so that your feet are as uh, wide as the mat. And then walk your hands back towards your feet and bend into a malasana squat. So your triceps are into the inner knees, hands into prayer, and use your triceps pushing into your inner thighs to open up through the heart. So your malasana can be down here. It can be way up here. That's totally fine. Wherever you need to be is where you are. There's no prize for getting down low. Let your pelvis be super heavy. Can you broaden through your collarbones? And again, find a steady breath here. Good. Slowly bring your fingertips back behind you. And drop your bum onto the ground and let your legs come out long in front of you. Maybe wiggle them out. And then keep your right leg out long, but you bring the left sole of the foot down to the earth. Now, I like it quite far away from my bum so that I can sit up nice and tall. There's no benefit to having it tucked in for this pose. See if you can maintain that concave curve of the low back. Bring your left fingertips back behind you, roll the shoulder out. Get tall with that uh, right arm up to the sky, breathe in. And then exhale, you can either hook the right elbow onto the left knee and twist. Or lately, I've been liking hooking it with my whole arm. So whatever's a good fit for you. If you want a little bit of a challenge before we end off, you can cactus that left arm here. You can give me a wave. Find your breath here. With every inhale, you get taller in your spine. With every exhale, you twist a little bit more. Last few breaths. Sit taller with every inhale. And slowly release that twist, come through center, and maybe you can have a twist over to the right. Bring your left leg out long in front of you, bring the sole of the right foot down onto the earth. Bring your right fingertips back behind you, left arm up to the sky, get super tall. And then exhale, twist over to the right. From your navel, low ribs, nipple line, armpit. If you'd like a challenge, you hook that left elbow onto the knee and maybe you cactus your right arm. Maybe giving a wave to the wall or to a friend or family member. And simply find your breath. Eliminating the rounding from the low back.
last few moments like this. Come back through center. Maybe you reach both fingertips over to the left in a counter twist. Come through center, bring the soles of your feet down to the earth. Scoot yourself so that you can lay yourself down onto your back. Bring your knees into your chest. You simply rock onto your low back so you can draw circles on the sky with your hands. Just giving yourself a nice massage here. Switch directions if you're circling. If this feels good, if it doesn't, skip it. Let the soles of the feet come back down to the earth. Draw your feet slightly away from your buttocks and then let your knees open out wide. Soles of the feet come down to the earth. Now, if your knees are up super high off the ground, you can bring your hands to fists perhaps. Bring those fists underneath your thighs, providing some support. So at a studio, we'd have blocks you can place underneath your knees, but that's quite all right. We can use our fists, experiment with drawing the feet farther away or closer in. Wherever you are, that's quite all right. Just let gravity do the work here in Supta Baddha Konasana. Last few rounds of breath, just like that. And then slowly start to slip your legs out nice and long in front of you with your toes flopping out to the side. Flip your palms so that your palms face up. And you'll find yourself in our final resting pose, Shavasana. If there's any other pose that you'd like to complete your practice, please go ahead and do that. Otherwise, join me here in Shavasana. Maybe you bring your chin into your chest and draw your head away from you slightly. Plant your head back down and then reach your chin up to the sky so you're so long in all four sides of the neck. You find broadness across your collarbones. Noticing the natural S-curve of the spine. The skull rooting down, lift through the, through the cervical spine. Thoracic spine lowers, lumbar spine lifts. Find a clunk down with your sacrum right at the base of your spine. And again, find presence here. Can you let go of the practice, the need to evaluate or predict what the rest of the day will look like? Can you just be here? Orienting yourself to your body in space with your eyes closed, maybe feeling where you are in the room, rooting down, trusting that the floor will hold the footprint, or the body print of your body. Go of any need to manipulate the breath. So you're not exercising any control, but you're just noticing what comes up as it does. Any thoughts, sensations in the body, sounds, just watch as they impinge on your consciousness without your choice. You're simply bearing witness. And then allow everything to be exactly as it is. Maybe you say to yourself, everything is perfect in this moment, just as it is. And the last part of the acronym is movement. So even as you are completely still in your body, can you connect to the movement, the blood circulating through your veins, the energy rising and falling, 
intensifying or subsiding. Can you trust that I'll bring you out of this pose exactly when it's time, but for now, can you just surrender? Be with what is. Maybe finding stillness or reprieve from the hustle and bustle of life. Maybe this resources us to come to life with a quality of energy that makes it so that we can handle whatever emotion comes up, whatever situation arises. chaos or stress or uncertainty, what if we touch that from this place? And with every exhale, you let go just a little bit deeper. In the last minute of Shavasana, just notice what you notice. Don't try and do anything. Slowly start to breathe just a little bit deeper, waking up the body from the inside out. Reach your arms up overhead and find a stretch from toes to fingers. And as you exhale, roll over onto your side body using your bicep as a pillow. Bring your hand down in front of your face and slowly start to push yourself up. Maybe your eyes stay closed. Finding a comfortable seat. Bringing your hands to heart center and bowing your chin in slightly. Maybe you consider the intention that you planted at the start of our practice seeing if there's any intention that you'd like to bring into the rest of your week or your weekend. We'll end by taking a breath together, breathe in through the nose, sigh it out. Thank you so much for your practice. Namaste.